Hello friends, press the subscribe button and hit the bell icon for more such easy videos. We are talking about the very important topic of excretion and osmoregulation that is counter current mechanism. What exactly you mean by this word counter current? Counter current means against, opposite. Something that is flowing in opposite direction that is called as counter current. Here we are going to understand how the concentration of urine is going to decide the counter current mechanism. So let us take two examples. I draw two circulatory system. So I draw this as Mr. A and here I take as Mr. Y. So I can take it in this way that this is MA that is Mr. A and SA that is Sister A. Here in case of Mr. A, the water is very much high in the circulatory system. It means there is low concentration of body fluid. And SA, here the water is low. Less water means high concentration of body fluid. And since there is high concentration of body fluid, it means here the blood will flow very slow because less water is there. So under this condition for Ma, I can say it is hypoosmolality. And here in case of Sa, the condition is hyperosmolality. So when the blood passes into the kidney, under both these conditions, what will happen? For MA, since there is low concentration of body fluid, means there is high amount of water present in the circulatory system. Hypoosmolality is seen under this condition. There will be no counter current mechanism because already there is high amount of water. So urine volume here will be very high. But in case of other condition where there is less water, the urine volume will decrease. Since the urine volume has decreased, it means there is more absorption of water taking place so that the water should be added into the circulatory system and the body fluid concentration will become normal. So looking at these two examples, what I can say for MA, where the water concentration or the amount of water is high, there is low concentration of body fluid, urine volume is going to definitely increase. It will pass out more urine so that water level in the body will decrease. So what is going to happen under both these conditions? We are talking about counter current mechanism. So the counter current mechanism will be seen only in the SA condition when there is less water high concentration of body fluid, hyperosmolality, so that water has to be absorbed, absorbed and absorbed. It will be added into the circulatory system and the body fluid concentration will come back to normal. So whenever we talk about counter current mechanism, remember it purely depends on the concentration of urine. Low water, basically, if there is less water in the urine, when we take less water intake, concentration of urine will definitely increase high loss of water due to sweating. These are different factors under which the concentration of urine is going to increase. If you take less water intake, more loss of water is taking place due to sweating. So definitely the volume of urine will decrease at the same time, the concentration will increase. So counter current mechanism takes place between two important factors. One, is the LOH loop of Henle of juxta medullary nephron and second is the vasa recta. Even collecting tubule is also involved in this counter current mechanism. How the salt urea concentration is maintained by the help of this counter current mechanism. Like we studied the RAS system in that same way we are going to talk about the counter current mechanism also. Glomerular filtrate is nothing but it is deproteinized plasma. This deproteinized plasma can also be called as primary urine. What happens here? Blood osmolarity. Normally it is 290, but we take it a round figure of 300 because 300 will help us to understand. What is the osmolarity of the blood? It is 290, but to make things simpler, I am going to take 300 as a round figure. So here, these are all the basically renal pyramid. There is a nephron. So I take out one pyramid outside. The renal pyramid is out and there is a loop of Henle and the nephrons 
so the space that you can see here between the pyramid and the loop of henle this is called as interstitial space very important or even it is also called as medullary interstitium the space basically here or it is also called as medullary interstitial fluid which is filled up here so remember loop of henle the renal pyramid it has medullary interstitium which is medullary interstitial fluid this is all LOH, which is surrounding the peritubular capillary surrounding the loop of Henle, is called as vasa recta. So, if I draw this loop of Henle, so this red colored one is nothing but the vasa recta. This is descending limb of loop of Henle. This is ascending limb of loop of Henle. We all know descending limb of loop of Henle is permeable to water, but it is impermeable to salt. Ascending limb of loop of Henle is permeable to salt and impermeable to water. The flow of the filtrate is from descending to ascending limb of loop of Henle. But when I look at the vasa recta, one side is ascending limb of vasa recta and other side is descending limb of vasa recta. Just look at the flow of the fluid in the vasa recta. It will be opposite in direction to that of the loop of Henle. And this is where the counter current comes into picture. One is going from top to bottom other one is going from bottom to top this is counter current mechanism for this i will be drawing one nephron and where we will understand how exactly the urea the sodium ion and all other components are maintained so what we are going to do take this as the loop of henle descending limb of loop of henle permeable to water and impermeable to salt Ascending limb of loop of Henle, permeable to salt and impermeable to water. Now this line is basically indicating the cortex, the upper area cortex and lower is medulla. Since some part of the nephron has entered from cortex in the medulla, this nephron I can call it as medullary or juxta medullary nephron. So this space that you can see here now, this space is called as medullary interstitium. Because here there will be what? medulla present the renal pyramid will be coming into picture here so this is descending limb which is permeable to water but it will not absorb salt but the ascending limb is permeable to salt basically but it is impermeable to water so whenever the filtrate is coming it is going to travel basically from top to bottom so we have to draw the efferent arteriole efferent arteriole and all other part we need to draw so see, when the fluid is in the PCT, the concentration blood osmolality will be how much? 300. As it is moving from top to bottom, water is getting absorbed. If water is getting absorbed, the concentration will increase. So it goes from 300 to 400 to 800 to 900 and finally 1200. Now through ascending limb of loop of Henle, it will travel where salt will be absorbed but not the water. Now since salt is getting absorbed, the concentration will decrease because the salt is less now in the fluid concentration decreases so again from 1200 it will go to 900 to 800 to 400 and finally 300 so logically when the fluid is traveling from pct into the descending limb of loop of henle due to absorption of water concentration has increased and when it is traveling from ascending limb of loop of henle due to absorption of salt the concentration is decreased the maximum concentration of 1200 is seen only in the u-shaped bend of the loop of henle so nscl and water that will be absorbed where it will go it will go in the vasa recta it has to go in the vasa recta see the collecting tubule has some urea present now urea the molecular size is very small since the size is very small, it escapes the collecting tubule and all the urea will get accumulated basically in the interstitium. How things are working, let's understand this. So the yellow one that I've drawn is the loop of Henle and the red one is the vasa recta. Look at the direction of flow. In vasa recta, definitely blood is flowing and in loop of Henle, the filtrate is flowing. But the direction of the flow is totally opposite. That is why it is called as counter current. Now under such condition, see from 300 it will start due to absorption of water in the 
descending limb the concentration is increasing now from 300 to 400 to 800 to 1200 and finally in opposite direction where nacl is absorbed concentration starts decreasing so again from 1200 it will reach to 300 water from the descending limb of loop of henle will go in the vasa recta now since water is going in the vasa recta it will dilute it will dilute the blood basically so the concentration will decrease so from 1200 it will be 900 to 800 to 400 to 300 but from the ascending limb of loop of henle you can see the salt is entering in the vasa recta so the concentration will increase so 300 to 400 to 800 finally 1200 this is what is counter current mechanism there is increase and decrease in the concentration of the fluid by flowing in opposite direction so remember between loop of henle and vasa recta counter current mechanism takes place adh is responsible for absorption of water aldosterone is responsible for absorption of na plus ion this is how the counter current mechanism is completed and at the same time this is collecting tubule which i have drawn the collecting tubule will have little bit of permeability as a result what happens the urea from the collecting tubule will escape which was supposed to be lost in urine but since collecting tubule was absorbing water at the same time due to small molecular size or nature what happens the urea escapes and the urea will directly enter in the loop of henle it will not go in the vasa recta so this is how the counter current mechanism takes place so remember in counter current mechanism very important opposite direction of the fluid concentration on one side keeps on increasing other side keeps on decreasing it takes place just to maintain the nacl and the urea concentration and the highest concentration that can be achieved is 1200 what is the normal osmolality in the blood it is 300 so this urea now from the collecting tubule has entered into the space fluid that is interstitial fluid now from this fluid it has to travel back into the nephron and from there again it will be eliminated out in the urine so this is counter current mechanism taking place in opposite direction so it's very simple to understand the counter current mechanism this mechanism nature has provided us just to balance the amount of salt and water in the body fluid and when the flow is in opposite direction how the concentration increases and decreases this is what we have to understand when we talk about urea as i told you some urea comes in the interstitial fluid because of the molecular size being very small so what exactly happens let's take it in this way this is the renal pyramid the space that you can see now here the here the concentration will be very high so basically now what happens the urea will travel into the ascending limb of loop of henle it will not go into the vasa recta basically and finally from there it will be absorbed so this is counter current mechanism